The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation, its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, its complexion the ash grey of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into the sockets. You do not want to bump into one of these, do you? Have you seen their videos? It's yeah. It's like a person just stood there like... <gasps> Hello, everybody. How are we all doing? Good. Yep. Can't complain. Everyone yeah, all right? Good, mate. Nice. Nice, nice. Bailey, this is a bit outdated because this doesn't come out when we film it, but you're now married. I am. I am indeed. It was a magical day. It was an excellent day. Obviously, we don't have to talk about it too much because it is your private life. It's entirely yes. up to you. Um, but yeah, we were all there and it was great. It was a good time. That was a good day. It, it was a good day. It went very, very fast, and it all kind of merges into one. But it was yeah. a good day. Yeah, no, it was, it was a beautiful day. It really was. I, I, I said it to you. I say privately, I did, and it was in a group chat. But um, if actually, I'm, I might be uh, stepping on some toes here because I don't know who watches this podcast. If I've been to your wedding, I apologise for what I'm about to say. <laughs> I've been to many weddings, and your wedding was the best wedding I've ever been to, 100. Uh, it was fa- it was genuinely that. fantastic. And also, for the record, I've been to some fucking immense weddings. Yeah, yours was fucking the best by far. It was sick. Oh, thank it really you. was. So yeah, no. Anyway, enough of that. Yeah, yeah? because your wedding. Isn't a Wendigo, don't know, shit treadmill. But it did <laughs> lead to this. It did lead to this podcast. I try in my head. It did. It did. It did. It did. It did. There's the fucking link. Right. So I'm at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> at Bailey's wedding. This. I'm talking uh, to our friend Carl. And uh, this guy just goes, Are you on that podcast? I was, uh, uh, both of you on that podcast that, uh, that George, I was like, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I thought I'd recognise your voice. Obviously, never watched it. So that was that was pretty fucking cool. He overheard me talking. Yeah, and recognised my voice. So shout out to you, mate, if you're out there, if you're listening. Hello, mate. You're right. <laughs> so you said to me that you've suggested to Bailey many times, and yeah. in Bailey's defence, he has also told us. So this is, uh, I'll take the blame. This is my fault. And um, that you wanted a Wendigo episode and you don't have to well i say you don't have to ask me twice evidently i did have to be asked twice but um <laughs> i do love the wendigo as a legend and a cryptid and cr- pr- perhaps a real creature so we're doing the wendigo episode today because i was asked at bailey's wedding to do this episode and to be fair to us to give ourselves a pat on the back the wedding was sunday this is thursday so it's a four day turnover for requests yeah, I'm pretty sure as well, like five minutes after he asked you, you put it in the group chat, like Wendigo episode. Well, I think That's while, while we're doing conversation. Yeah. I was like, put it in the group chat. That's yeah. it, yeah. I was in the yeah. other corner and my phone went off and I was like, why is that coming to your head? Yeah, yeah, it's because I was being not berated. You, you were, if you're out there, you were aggressive. Yeah. But I appreciated, I, appreciated the, I appreciated the passion. Bay, I do uh, please, I do apologise. What was what was your friend's name? I'm it's so sorry. James. I was gonna say James, James. I didn't want to get it wrong. James, yeah, shout James. out to James, everyone. But we dedicate today's Wendigo episode to James. Right. Okay, so Scott, you are gonna lead this one. You're gonna give us all the goss on the Wendigos. Yes. Let's so, go. What does everybody know about a Wendigo? I have done a video on the Wendigo. You have. Um, I believe, yeah, I believe, I believe the Wendigo is a Native American, uh, myth or legend, whatever you or folklore, whatever you want to call it. And I think there's a connection to cannibalism and a curse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm on the right wavelength. So the first place, I don't know about you guys, but the first place I actually heard of a Wendigo was until dawn. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did a did a stream of that during lockdown, and I have to say, didn't see it coming. I was like, okay, it's Wendigos. So spoilers for anyone who hasn't played it, but Jesus Christ, graph, I come out in like 2015. <laughs> so, to anyone. yeah, there's no yeah. need. That was so out of order. I'm sorry. He's just channeling that James aggression. Yeah, literally. <laughs> he was like, are you going to fucking grow up and do it? <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. 
He didn't. So James, you're very nice. The Wendigo uh, is, like you say, it's a myth and legend amongst North American Algonquin speaking tribes. Nice. Um, and nice. it first appeared in written texts in 1636 when Paul Lejuan, a missionary who was living among the Algonquin people, described a creature that had eaten some tribal members nearby and that would eat a great many more of them if it were not called elsewhere. Ooh, so elsewhere. it goes by quite a few different names, which I told Lozzie before this. Yes. Yeah, now I've got to try and say again. Oh, is it in the, in the Native American tongue? So there's obviously the Wendigo classic. Mm-hmm. There's the Achin, the Chinu, the Kawak, the Maway, the Weetigo, the Witinsigo, oh. the Witigo, the Weendigo. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just get that one, one more time? One more time for the audio listeners. That was good. Yeah. The Weendigo. Brilliant. Nice. Uh, How's that spelled? The Weetigo, W I I N D I G O O. There's the goo. I see and I there. emphasize Windigo. the goo and the E because the next one after that is the Windigo, which is W I N D I G O. So it's the same one, okay. just without the extra letters. Uh, right. And then there's the Windicook, the Winterco, and the Whittaker. And also the Wintercoat. Yeah, Sorry, I was going to say, like, it sounds like a. Yeah, the Wintercoot. Uh, wow. So it's got a few names. So yeah, there's quite a few variations of it. Uh, generally, the most common tale that I've found begins with a lost hunter right. who is lost during a brutal winter somewhere around the Canadian border. Uh, his intense hunger leads him to cannibalism, which ah. is not a good thing, apparently, according to the articles. Probably uh, shouldn't do it. <laughs> no. Unless you need to. It depends who you ask. True. True. I'd try it. Don't give a fuck. Sue me. I think you'd have to try it. Not just Definitely. on a Wednesday evening, though. We're talking like survival. Well, okay. I'm, I'm talking like, you know, know off the, in okay. a restaurant type nice. deal. If, right. Restaurant. Okay. Here's a question. Okay. Sorry, sorry to pull it away. It's about cannibalism. So, you know, like rich people, right? Not rich people. I mean, like super rich, like billionaires. They get bored, don't they? And they do like weird shit. If you were invite, um, yeah. If you were invited to a billionaire's banquet, right, and they were like, "I have some very strange tastes in this world." Um, I have amputated my own leg, and I wish to serve you a slice this evening. I don't want to say like you get paid for it because I think you just do it when you're so that you're not getting paid for it, but you have the opportunity. You know, this is this guy, it's what this guy wants. Yeah. He wants you to eat his flesh, a little bit of like quad. <laughs> and you can just, you can literally just, you know, it's nicely cooked. You can just, no, just have it and just try a bit. Would Tender. you do it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, probably. As long as, as, long as it's not an expense to me. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. No, nothing. It's just like this is an experience. You, you have the opportunity to try human. I'd do it. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I think you'd have Judge to. me. I think everyone would. There's no way your curiosity, unless you're like a vegan or a veg, I don't think your curiosity would just get the better of you. Wouldn't it? It's got, yeah. It would you give to. it a go, I guess. But then what would happen? But if we were on a certain Native American mountain, Scott, what would happen to us? So, according to the tale, after feasting on another human's flesh, this uh, lost hunter transformed into a ravenous man-beast roaming the forests and mountains in search of food. Mm, nice. So there were two sort of general depictions of the Wendigo, uh, the first of which is a fearsome beast that stalks and eats humans, which in some legends the Wendigo is described as a gaunt creature with ashen flesh, uh, sometimes described as being up to 15 foot tall, Jeez. which seems quite big. That's massive. It's bigger than I was expecting it to be. House, isn't it? Oh no, meters. Ah. So I think feet. No. Four and a half meters, five meters. Jesus. I mean, it's not short. Yeah, that's 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 sizable. 
for sure. Yeah, that's that's like two yeah. two and a bit shacks. Um, sorry, <laughs> hang on. What the fuck? Are you... What? I'm, I'm assuming sorry. you mean Shaquille O'Neal, right? Not yeah. just oh shacks. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Sorry, that makes sense. I thought you meant like, what the fuck are you measuring like, like, like a, sh- a shack, like a house? No, shack. they're the standard measurement for a shack. Yeah, standard measurement, sorry. just a little wooden Shaquille wooden O'Neal. Yeah, that's what that's I. I picked up what you were putting down there, Scott. Yeah. Fucking, I was like, fucking shacks. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. You're right, I'm wrong. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I get 15 it. foot tall. Uh, some Wendigo are described as having sunken, or in some cases, glowing eyes, yeah. sharp fangs and claws. Its lips are often said to have been chewed or are completely missing as it has eaten them. Nice. And they're sometimes said to have fur, though other times are completely bald. Uh, the most common depiction of a Wendigo generally also shows the creature to have horns or antlers, like that of a deer or a moose. Moose. I think that's the most common sort of picture you imagine. Yeah. That kind of skinny, skeletal, deer-headed thing. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like what's in um, Until Dawn. Yeah. And the most universal feature of the Wendigo, whatever the sort of depiction you're going on, is said to be it's smell because it smells oh, oh. of rotting and decaying flesh. Oh, makes sense. It's often said yeah. that before you see a Wendigo, you'll smell it. Oh, nice. Which, hmm. yeah. So if you're ever in the woods and you start eating flesh and you smell rotting flesh, run. Yeah. Well, they're pretty rapid though, aren't they? Uh, certainly. Were yeah, I think so. The, uh, in the game, I don't want to get because obviously I don't know what you've got planned. I don't want to get ahead, but isn't it infectious as well? So there was a bit that I haven't actually got in here about how it can potentially be transmitted through bites. Yeah. Although I couldn't find any sort of people saying that has ever happened, just that right. it could happen. So I don't actually know if that's a thing. Right. Uh, that would suck. Yeah. If they, you know, you can't run away from it. And when it bites you, you turn into one. Yeah. I sort working... of assume if that was the case, I assume there'd be a lot of them though. Yeah. But I I don't know I, I well it's a bit hard to interject because obviously I don't know where where you're going with this but is aren't isn't that the legend like it's like a curse that is that is like locked to a mountain is that right so they, that's why you don't see them elsewhere which is a bit convenient so that, um they don't they can't leave the mountain of which they've committed cannibalism so. To an extent, there seems that seems to be the main place it happens around a mountain and potentially some mines within that mountain, yeah, um, and some caves within that mountain. But they are also they have been spotted in a few different places, which are potentially connected by that massive underground cave system in America that I think you looked at in the National Parks video. Yeah, yeah, it's where the where the bigfoots are. Yeah, so yeah, that big interconnected cave system apparently does go to this mountain so people sort of think they can go anywhere oh, which yeah yeah I've, i remember now i remember now yeah there's like a fucking like a map isn't there of mm-hmm. like all these these systems and then when you place it over the national parks and shit it's like they're all connected and stuff it's fucking wild i think it like links up with all the like mass missing amounts of people yeah yeah, yeah. National parks. That was it, yeah yeah fuck that man yeah so you were saying oh, that like the potential of it being an infectious bite, but do you think that a lot of them, if it was the case, if it was an infectious bite, that others don't tend to turn because they just get like completely mauled and eaten by the Wendigo that's attacked them? Yeah, because I suppose that's if you if you've point. got like a fifteen meet like fifteen foot beast chasing you, if it catches you, it's unlikely you're going to be able to get away. So coming away with just a bite to then have the potential to turn into one probably would be slim. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Especially for a beast that's, like, its defining characteristic is it's meant to be really hungry all the time. Yeah. Yeah, has it got an unsatiable, it can't be satiated. Yeah, can an it? unsatiable it's... hunger. Yeah. Um. So one specific Native American author named Basil H. Johnson who Basil. doesn't sound Native American to me. Um, I, I've Ooh. got conflicting things. Some people said he was Native, was some people say, said he wasn't. I was going to say, sorry to interject, Bailey, if you ever have a third son, 
Quem é que é o nome? Basil Bailey. Basil Bailey. <risos> o yes. Basil. Basil yeah. Bailey. I'll do that. That is Basil. Basil the pod. <laughs> Basil Bailey. Um, it just goes uh, so well. Basil H. Johnson described the Wendigo in the following way. Uh, and this is apparently from a sighting. So this is kind of a sighting, kind of him taking some creative freedom, I think. Mm-hmm. The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, with its bones pushing out over its skin. Ooh. Its complexion, the ash grey of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into the sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disen- recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody, unclean and suffering from suppurations of the flesh. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odour of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. You do not want to bump into one of these fuckers, do you? No, no. not particularly, no. I'll take Absolutely. Bigfoot. Yeah, Absolutely Bigfoot just picks not. you up in your sleep and just runs off. Yeah. Here, this and its skin up. fits. Yeah, that's a, that's also a very good point. Fuck that. That's it's horrible. always good when your skin fits. So, so this guy's just seen this thing and he's just like writing down like, fuck me. <laughs> a terrible <laughs> odour. This is it's why good. I think he's yeah. taking some creative freedom with it as opposed the to it being a straight protruding from the skin. The skin just, it as, it, as it's just ripping his entire body apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Strength of 15 <laughs> ops. Oh, oh, he's just, he's just, <laughs> re- he's just saying this out loud. And then the Wendy was like, fuck it up, man. I've got feelings over it. <laughs> I'm fucking trying to eat you here, mate. You're putting me off. <laughs> uh, said to have exceptional eyesight, hearing and smell, as well as increased strength and speed, the Wendigo has been compared to many, has been compared by many to Bigfoot and to werewolves. In some cases, the Wendigo is said to be able to transform between its human form and oh. its Wendigo form. I was nice. going to ask that question, which could lead fair. to it wandering back into oh, you know, its camp, into society, oh. changing. Yeah. No, it's just like I yeah. think I think the ones in Until Dawn could do that. Really? Could they? I don't I think, know. I think one of them could because wasn't no. one of them one of the people in your party no. oh I, I think that was an alternate ending that i never saw oh i think in one of the endings one of them one of the people in your party turned into one oh. yeah i think that's because he gets bitten though is that um that's spoilers is that Re- what's his name is it remy malik what's his what's that act? his name the one who josh. plays he plays josh in the game doesn't he yeah, yeah. I, that's the guy the chick's brother from the start yeah yeah, I'm pretty sure he turns into one in, in an alternate ending. Possibly. I have to say, actually, all of those games were on sale on Steam the other day, and I nearly bought like Quarry and um, the Quarry is really good. Very what's the one in of... Afghanistan? It's the City one after Little Hope. Something. I stopped. Oh, yeah. at Li- I stopped at Little Hope, and then for no reason, I, I love them apart from that's the one. The it's the one with Ashley Tisdale, isn't it? Isn't it? The twist for Medal of Medan. Or whatever it was, was fucking shite man of Medan. That was a mouthful, was yeah. What's what? Um, I said it's the one with Ashley Tisdale in it, it isn't? Ugh, I can't even say it again. The one yeah, with yeah. Ashley Tisdale in it, isn't Ashley it? Tisdale in in one of those games makes it weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ashley Tisdale. Uh, she was in High School Musical. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right, so, that, that, uh, speaking yeah. of Until Dawn, it's actually getting remastered, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Uh, fucking no reason. But <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's making ha- Hayden Panettiere relevant again. Uh, <laughs> so good for her, you know. She peaked in Heroes. Yeah, what a throwback! So what a generally show that went to absolute shit. Anyway, yeah, the spinoff was pretty good. Um, I don't think I saw it. Generally. When the Wendigo is being described as a physical creature, they're said to live near the woodlands and the lakes of Canada and the northern US. And due to their enhanced physical characteristics, can travel quickly and quietly across and through snow and ice. Mm. No, it's... Which obviously would be very cold sort of around those areas a lot of the year. So they mm. would need to be able to navigate 
kind of like a deer, I assume, where they can stay on top of snow, not sink into it. Yeah. Uh, like, some like say, little fuckers. Mm, some say that the Wendigo can only be killed by a shaman who can subdue and destroy it using a silver, steel, or iron bullet or dagger, which, again, is very similar to a werewolf. Mm. And some legends claim that the only way to destroy a Wendigo and to end the curse is to remove its heart and melt it. Gee, that's pretty creative. I haven't heard that before. That's cool. Melt the heart. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you get the heart out of a 15-foot thing with claws and... Yeah. Shoot it with a silver bullet first. Yeah. That's true. Put it down, take the heart out, Yeah, melt it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was the physical Wendigo, as if the Wendigo is a creature. Right, there's yeah, also the, a spirit, isn't there? Yeah, so the other more common uh oh. Wendigo sort of tale is that of a spirit that possesses humans, causing them to become cannibals. Ah, so, so it's the other way around. Ooh. Yeah, so okay. it's believed that this spirit targets those who put their survival needs above others and eat human flesh. So, although it can possess anyone, right. it is drawn to and targets people that commit cannibalism, cannibalism right okay. uh, which then makes them go wendigo that is the no, um, he's so wendigo he's going to go wendigo so they're possessed by the spirit he's going to wendigo, wendigo. <laughs> nice imagine imagine a woman called wendy yeah, i was something. literally about to say this yeah wendy's gone wendigo <laughs> Wendy, no. Oh, yeah, he's you're trying to tell her to run Wendigo. away from it. <laughs> Wendigo, go Wendigo. That'd be class. Um, so I really Wendigo's... hope that happens to a Wendy one day. Sorry, carry on, Scott. <laughs> Could definitely make that a movie. Yeah, um, yeah. Wendy. So Wendigo. when they are possessed by the spirit of a Wendigo, their hearts and spines are encased in an ice so thick. That you can hear it popping and cracking oh. if you put your ear to their chest. Ooh. Oh. What the fuck? Wake yeah. me up, Wendy Go Go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. You're proud of that one, Lars. Yeah, I was. I was actually yeah. waiting to say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Waited for an opening. That's it. That's a beautiful so, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, their hearts and spines in case in ice is a bit makes it harder to remove the heart. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why it has to be melted. Thing. That makes sense. Ah, oh, yes, that would make sense. Uh, so I did wonder like how you melt a heart. The melting of the ice around the heart, or is it like actually melting? Or has it turned heart? the heart into ice? Ooh. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't really specify. Why the spine? Why the spine as well? Why has that got to be ice? Yeah. I, mean, I can get on. I can get on board with it with a heart being ice because it kind of. But why the spine? Yeah. Just while we're continuing this, Lars, could you just Google image? I know we've seen it, but could you just Google image when when to go? I just want to see a few of these effers. Yeah, it was, I think there should be a few very different iterations of a Wendigo. Yeah, well, that's good. We want to see different. Because from looking through it, there's a lot of different descriptions. Again, some are fifteen oh, foot. <laughs> With deer antlers, some are not. Yeah, that's okay. That's 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 good. <laughs> so where are we at? Where are we at, Scott? Oh, look at these. Oh, oh yes. That's pretty fucking cool. You got the one with antlers because quite it's a lot. There's a lot of a lot of them with antlers, isn't there? Mm. Oh, there's one with the fur there, which has like yeah. the head of the one from like Until Dawn. Yeah, that's pretty. Oh cool. yeah, yeah. So what else have we got, Scott? What's going on? So, um, where are we at? So yeah, their spine gets encased in ice, and if you put your ear to their chest, you'll hear that popping and cracking. The possessed person then becomes cannibalistic, deranged, and violent. Bastards. And again, the only cures for Wendigoism uh, are to melt the heart, or, this has got a slightly different cure on this bit, to pour hot bear fat down the person's throat to melt the ice. Oh, what? Bear oh, fat. Essentially killing bear them in the process. Fat. So. Right, yeah, no so, shit. Hang on, right. You've got to fucking tame or kill a bear. 
who oh, no. fucking killed the Wendigo. That's great. Extract the bear's fat. Just melt that set down. the bear on the Wendigo. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. that's that just adds like a whole fucking another hurdle. So like we finally know how to do it, but we've got to kill a bear, Alex. <laughs> it would. It you would must kind of pour change. molten bear fat onto the heart of the Wendigo, but the Wendigo's skin can only be pierced by the claw of a night owl. It's just like oh, so many just fucking keeps going. Like, it just yeah. keeps going. Yeah. But the but, but the, the claw of the night owl must be doused in the venom of a cobra from the Saudi Arabian desert. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Hang on a minute, I'll just won't come back. I'll just leave and won't come back. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna stay in Saudi, I think. Yeah, <laughs> no, you yeah, gotta yeah. come back to the North American mountains, mate. Nah. No. Yeah. So, so Scott, with with the spirit one, do they when they um go Wendigo? No. Do they also like transform into that like sort of known look for a Wendigo, or do they kind of stay more human? Um, so I think from what I can tell, they stay more human. It just drives them insane. Uh, so they just have like the thought of the Wendigo without yeah. the physical. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So Wendigo sightings seem to be few and far between. Uh, the majority of which happened between the 1800s and the 1920s were the last like significant ones. There was one case where, or there have been a lot of cases throughout history where somebody has said that their wife was going Wendigo, and so the only thing to do was to snap their neck and prevent yeah, that from happening. Well, um, um, yeah, there's a lot of just small anything, ones like that. They? People will say anything to get out of a fucking court case, do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's other ones where someone's come home from a hunting trip and found that their wife has murdered their kids and gone Wendigo uh, because is it, she's, is that, she started is that, eating them. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is this like a a female thing or? I don't know specifically. That's, that's the one that seemed to be mentioned a lot. I don't know if it's linked in some way to obviously other mental issues and people have just used the Wendigo as kind of a scapegoat for that in those cultures where it exists. I would certainly assume that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my guess. I feel a bit bit sad today. Whoa! Ah! You're not going to read me, are you? Ah! So one story of someone going Wendigo is that of Swift Runner. Oh, great name. It was just after the the winter. He weren't just a Swift Runner. His name he was, was Swift, Swift Runner. Runner. Oh, Swift. wow. It was just after the winter of 1878 to 1879 uh, in Alberta, Canada. A Cree man named Swift Runner, nice. who was known and liked in town, returned from his winter camp without his family. He was behaving strangely, and he claimed that his family had died of starvation even though he looked pretty strong and healthy for a man who had survived a winter that had killed nine other people. Yeah. That was the oh, nine so members of his family. Right. Okay. Uh, the Northwest Mounted Police decided to check in on him, and what they found was a camp strewn with human bones, some of which had been gnawed on. Oh, sorry. He's trying so to get rich. Yeah. So, yeah. Swift Runner confessed to cannibalism. Uh, He said he'd been having strange dreams and that a spirit had told him to eat his family, which included his wife, brother, mother, and six children. Fucking hell. Uh, They described them all at the same time. We'll get to that. Oh. Oh. Uh, They described this as him going Wendigo. Nice. It was a harsh winter. But it wasn't an eat your family harsh winter. <laughs> it was bad. It wasn't that fucking bad. <laughs> Those aren't my words to clarify. I wish they were. That's amazing. <laughs> what what sort of winter would grant that? So, do you know what? To be fair, there was a lot of snow drift. I'd say like a nuclear winter might condemn it. But that's about the only. I was going to say ice age. That would also. You know, that's it's pretty cold. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so Swift Runner then admitted that he what killed and ate one of his sons the last of his family to die, specifically so that there would be no witnesses to his crimes. Ah. Turns ah, out yeah. his son's name was Slow. 
Flo Walker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Uh, Swift Runner was then hanged for the ghastly murders in December 1879 at Fort Saskatchewan. Wow. So That's fucking insane. Yeah. So in the modern day, uh, every now and then, a sighting will emerge, like the 2019 sighting that Lozzie oh. should have ah. there, when mysterious howls were heard in the Canadian wilderness, sparking confusion. Now, okay. am I, do you recommend me playing this video just for like, you know, copyright? <laughs> I can. It's, it's, a, it's down to like... you. Play it muted. Or do you need the, do you you need need the audio? The sound. It's the sound. It's the... Oh, is it? Oh, do you not? Fuck it. Do it. Right. Let me pop it on screen. Do it. We do it for the people, not for the fucking monetization. We're definitely reacting to this, so it should be fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fuck that, mate. I've been there before. Yeah, same. Well, we got the... a strange unknown noise caught on video. So this was in the Canadian wilderness. Copyright claim by Derek374. Is it on? It is. If this is a jump scare, Scott, you're off the pod. I'm just going to let you know. Oh. That's a kid. Oh, fucking hell. Oh. <laughs> That's all right, then. Whoa. Oh. Can. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I'm a jump scare. You can't pick me off for that one. That wasn't even no, intentional. That's, yeah, that's right. Tell you what, right? Fuck Nash. Yeah. That was the child That's it. again. Antagonise yeah. the fucking demon growl. Uh, fuck, fuck <laughs> national parks in America, man. So right. That is essentially the gist of the video. It, yeah. There's so a very that's fucking nuts. Where Ram. was where was that video taken? Uh, Canada. Canada in a forest. Fuck America. Canada in a forest. Do they got? Do they got? Do Drop they, have, in. Do, they have, <laughs> do they have bears in Canada? Because it could also be a bear. Uh, I don't actually. I haven't actually read this article through. I've only watched the video, so I don't know if it says anything else above laws. Ah. They speculate it could be a large wolf. Yeah. Grizzly bear. Yeah. Look right there. Yeah. It says it could come yeah. from a grizzly bear. Okay. Uh, while the species of grizzly bear has never been documented in the region. It could be. That's yeah. basically what that says. It's fucking nuts. Like in America, Canada, like, like the fact that they have bears and fucking mountain lions and shit. Like we go for a walk in the woods. <laughs> what is going to kill you? You a might fox. find a badger. Oh. Yeah. Where but realistically, there? I'll ask you a very, very good question. Have yeah. you ever seen a live badger? Because no. I've only seen them on the side of the road. Yeah. No, I've never That's seen true. a living one. Never seen it. I don't think they exist. They Ooh. just they're just born dead. <laughs> On the side of the road. But then what's given birth to them? Oof. It's a conspiracy. When do you Because they're always yeah. dead on the side of the road as well. Badger goes. Yes. Uh, so... <laughs> Badger goes. Yes. yes. <laughs> that was great. There we go. See, at least you acknowledged my joke. So that is one of the only sightings I could find of a Wendigo. Uh, that's not a sighting, sighting, Scott. Don't take the piss. Yeah, that's what a, people are claiming. Scream in the distance. Okay. It's, that's what people are claiming. Sighting, you have to Wendigo. see. Yeah, I've not managed to find any Wendigo sightings basically that's since nineteen twenty something. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they are still reported, but people aren't living to tell the tales. It's more people being found in the woods, mauled to death. Oh, with like well, bite there we mark, go. with sort it's of like funny. semi-human sized bite marks though. Oh. So they've been eaten by a baby bear. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, basically. Mm. Um so following on from that, we have got the Wendigo psychosis, which oh, in yeah. the 1900s is a term that hasn't actually been accepted by popular science, um, or by medicine for that matter. Uh, which is being used by some psychologists to describe a cultural syndrome mm -hmm. in which native people would experience delusions of becoming uh, possessed by an evil spirit 
resulting in depressive episodes, violence, and a craving for human flesh, which mm. in some cases led to cannibalism. So obviously it gets the name from the cannibalism, but yeah, people See, don't really, really think that exists. That's really interesting. That I remember reading about that Wendigo psychosis because you got to think about it, right? Because it goes both ways. It's either they are possessed by the spirit of the Wendigo and it is a real thing, or, and more likely, the people throughout history have had this. Um, oh, fuck what do you call it, mental health issue that has been dubbed Wendigo psychosis, yeah. you know, throughout history. So it works both ways, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. So that is basically the Wendigo. Mad. Well, mm -hmm. well done. That was, that was fantastic. I love the Wendigo. I think it's really cool, really cool cryptid. Lot, a few layers to it, which is nice. Unconventional way of killing it, which is also really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, is there I don't I don't know everyone's knowledge um off the dome. We'll certainly do an episode because well, we we'll do an episode on basically every cryptid when it's all said and done, I'm sure. But like because in my head, the Wendigo gets mixed up with the rake. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. Is is the rake a oh no, obviously cryptids are like not real until they are. But is the rake a, is the rake like Slender Man? Like made up on the internet, or is yeah, the rake another? I think, I think the rake was made on Creepy Pasta, right? Um, but since then, people have claimed they've seen the rake. Yeah. So it's people one of those. Also claimed it's in Slender Man. Yeah, it's one of those chicken and egg type things. Done. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but... I always get them two mixed up in my head: the rake and the Wendigo. Yeah, because the Wendigo also gets kind of saddled in with the Skinwalker to some extent. And that yeah. one, yeah. Um, in the sort of physical descriptive sense, they're yeah. quite, you know, the sort of potentially decaying flesh, kind of animalistic, yeah. eating yeah. people. Grim. So yeah, they're quite. There's quite a lot of cryptids that branch sort of over each other. In well, a, we mentioned yeah. it in the last one, didn't we? Where like there's so many sightings, and people are only going to put them down to what they think it is yeah so like you know when it was like a werewolf or a wendigo or a bigfoot or whatever pigman or pigman sorry yeah pigman then it's like it's only people's interpretation of it to then what gives it that name but mm. there's nothing to say that it, they can't all be the same thing that people are seeing yeah. they're just giving them different names yeah yeah, yeah absolutely you're right I think that's quite likely in a lot of cases. I think so. If these things are real, I wouldn't be surprised if half of them don't exist because they are just another description of what someone yeah. else has seen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a... Yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. What well, would you rather see? A Wendigo, a Rake, or a... What would you rather if you had to bump into one of them? A Rendigo awake, a oh, fucking hell. A Wendigo, a, a Rendigo, and all or awake. A Wendigo, a Rake, or a Skinwalker. Skinny boy. Skinny boy. Um, let the boy. <laughs> <laughs> the man is it? I don't. I don't really know. So I think you're fucked either way, ain't you? Really. Based on today's episode, I'd say anything other than a Wendigo. Yeah, yeah. I think Skinwalker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they just sort of like they're just like human. They're just like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen their videos? It's yeah, like yeah. A person just stood there like on the side of a <gasps> road in the middle of nowhere. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> it's like exactly. Right, mate. Yeah. Cool. See, I reckon if the Wendigo is real, don't. the reason why there's not been any sightings is just because people can't get away from them. Yeah, yeah. they've not That's lived true. to tell the tale. That is true. That is a perfectly valid reason as to why you would never fucking see one. But yeah, I do think the I do think the fact that Wendigo branches into sort of two categories of there might be a physical thing, there might be a spirit sort of thing. Yeah, they might potentially cross in the middle, and the spirit causes the other. Yeah, obviously because okay. it's so up in the air. I, I quite like that element of it. Yeah, definitely. It's cool. I like it. <laughs> It is indeed. Right. Okay. 
Well, that's the Wendigo wrapped up. Thank you so much, Scott. That was fantastic. We've got the Patreon question of the day. Mm-hmm. You guys didn't do one last week, even though Scott is a patron, so we could say that. Oh, that's it. That's it. Throw my little bus. Are we going to um, do two? Yeah, should we do two to make up for it? No, nah, don't take the piss. I don't think I can find one. Oof. Um, I can't remember what ones we've done. Have we done? I think we've done Jean Luc's, haven't we? Because I remember saying yes. Jean, yeah, Jean Luc Picard made a Star Trek joke. Yeah, um, sorry, Jean. Um, let me just have a little quick break. Oh yeah. yeah, just while we're doing that. Um, so we got. Uh, so my my sister Chloe started a new job, and uh, she's enjoying it very much. And she was saying she was walking um, nearby where she was working, and she has found a massive abandoned building. Ooh. So, and that would be about an hour away from me, I guess. Ooh. Um, so, yeah. Potential. Potential for a little visit. Which will, nice. be, which will be really good. Which will be really good. Okay. Right. Rebecca Smith. Rebecca Smith. Interesting question. Really interesting question. I don't know if I have an answer for it. What is the one location that you would never investigate hmm. okay what i mean one location you would never investigate i can jump right in on that one please do I'm, possibly for all of us because we've literally had it would be a graveyard where our own loved ones are buried because we had that when we went to boa castle we did mm. we did yeah so the borough castle ruins yeah, the Borough Castle ruins um, that me, Lozzie, and Scott did. Uh, my granddad is buried in the uh, in the church nearby. Hmm. Yeah, I think graveyards in general are, are very tricky because they, they seem be... like the most obvious location. But I, it's just, and it's weird, isn't it? Because it's like, well, no matter where we're going, we're trying to contact the other side. Yeah. So why would you draw the line at where they're yeah. buried? And we're never uh, actively disrespectful. Weird. No. But it just feels and disrespectful compared weird. to... I think yeah. it's if you're... I think the, the kind of whole disrespect comes into it is if, obviously, I'm not calling anyone out or saying anything for other channels that, that do the, sort of like the same thing that we do, but like leaning into things and then finding names on like graves and then like oh we're communicating with this guy here and trying to like make links with because of the information's there in front of him yeah. do you know what i mean yeah how many like nukes top five videos have you seen where someone's at a fucking graveyard and then there'll be like a fucking ghost of a child walking around which is obviously just a fucking a kid you know i don't know um in makeup or whatever mm-hmm. but you know you gotta think like fucking hell man so you're implying that you know there's a dead child walking in front of you. It's pretty, pretty fucking heavy. But yeah, I don't know. It's weird. But yeah, I think graveyards. I guess. Is it bad? Let us know in the I, I have no intention of doing any graveyards, right? I mean, you have done Cold Christmas, which is That's kind true. of there there are gravestones there. They glow in the dark. Mm. But that true. was yeah, that's not really an excuse to say that was kind of the reason because they did, you know. Yeah, it's like this weird phenomena, but yeah, you're right. Let us know down in the comments. Do you think that a par- like I'm not saying we're going to do this, but do you think a paranormal investigation at a graveyard? I think thinking about it, I think, I think the, the big thing with it is I think if it's an active graveyard or not. Yeah, that's if people are still being buried there or have been in the last sort of you know yeah thirty years for sure for sure. I think it's a lot if people are still going there to mourn years the scope. No, I know what you mean. It's it's weird. It's yeah, people still go in there to like mourn, drop flowers off, etc., and they come in and find us there. Yeah, because cold Ouija Christmas boards is... and that's just yeah, that's just it's like in the middle yeah. of nowhere, isn't it? It's really strange. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly there. I don't know anywhere else really. I don't think there's any locations as such that I would yeah, say that off. I've, yeah. I mean, again, there's kind of other obvious. Not obvious ones, but like Auschwitz, I wouldn't. 
Yeah. Okay, I get where yeah. you're going. Yeah. I would, right. I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I just, definitely I just would, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, no. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Things like that. Yeah. Places where disasters and um really negative events happen like that. See, but then I'm going to sound like a total hypocrite. I would fucking love to go to Chernobyl. I mean, how fucking horrific was that? Yeah. You know? I agree. It, well, yeah, okay, it was horrific, but <coughs> I think it was but, horrific for a lot of different reasons. Oh, for sure, of course. So of course. I don't but think... It's like, a, it's like a global... Yeah, for sure. I, but I don't think that doing a paranormal investigation in Chernobyl would be... But also, I don't think I, I don't think I'd do a paranormal investigation. I think I would I would do an urban exploration. Just an urban exploration. Well, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think that that would be. To... Yeah, I don't think that that would be disrespectful, personally. Yeah. 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 It's it's it, yeah. It's a strange one. It's tricky. Yeah. But like, mm. as for like, you know, are there any paranormal places you could rent out? that would be too scary. I don't think so. Cause I think, no. we've, you know, we've kind of been to some of the biggest ones, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the question, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. Um, it's definitely an interesting question to think about without a doubt, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. Lozzy, you happy with those answers? Yeah. I was going to say the, <clears throat> the graveyard thing is very much how you feel doing it rather yeah. than yeah i don't think it is actually as long as you're you know you're starting to fucking dig up graves and shit to get <laughs> yeah. to get the content yeah um and you're not being purposely disrespectful i don't think yeah. it is disrespectful but i do see why people would yeah not want yeah. to do it yeah yeah it's interesting yeah yeah Fair. Yeah, I think yeah, with graveyards, I think it just depends on on what you would do with the content. Do you know what I mean? Like it could be yeah. very like completely okay, but very quickly not be okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side of that, like one of the ones I would love to do in a weird fucked up way would be like an abandoned morgue. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's then weird. again, with the morgue, I. It's, it's different because it's not like a resting place it's no, like it's where they transfer, pass through yeah. so yeah. I don't think a morgue would be or like an abandoned, obviously not an active morgue but like an abandoned yeah. morgue would be uh, yeah. would, would right. be off Jimmy's off cell cards. down there I mean Fuck I do you. want to do what? what? Uh, I do want to do an active morgue to be fair no, an abandoned <laughs> mug. <laughs> <fucking laughs> <up. laughs> you threw, you threw <laughs> me off with your Jimmy Savile Jimmy Savile Jimmy Savile threw me off uh, I want to do an abandoned mall because I want to do the thing where you get in the body cooler that you see them do in a lot of the paranormal shows where you do like a 10 minute yeah. lock in, 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 the a, body in a morgue. Cooler. They're abandoned yeah. after you're finished. <laughs> there it is. That's it. That's I don't know what that means, but. Nah. Me neither, but you want to become a patron. I know that much. Come on, yeah. guys. Pound a month. Bonus content. Be in a patron. You'll be getting a patron. I, I, I want to let everyone know. The next, because I feel because I feel a little bit bad that you know uh, we haven't the Patreon is still you know getting all the early access stuff and, and everything, but because we haven't done an investigation this year yet, you know there hasn't been as much on there as I would like it to. It's still plenty on there, but not as much as I like. So I I want to really go overboard on the next investigation, um, with like behind the scenes and little bonus bits and pieces for the Patreon. So yeah look forward to that look forward to that um i'm actually on holiday for the next two weeks i'm going to thailand um but the pods are covered um so actually weirdly this will be going out on the 6th i believe so i'm actually back in like four days time but um yeah we'll be back with the pod when i come back um and then we'll be getting into an investigation as well um mm. we've also a little insider for people that have made it this far We've been given some dates for 30 East Drive. Oof. Now, it is towards the tail end of the year. Um, earliest is September, but it's still cool. It still means that we can go back, which I really want to do. One of them, I don't know if you guys, did you guys see the dates? Yes. Yes. One of them is Maya's birthday, 
and I think that would be quality. Yeah. I think that would be really good. And obviously, Loz, you didn't come with us to 30's Drive. I didn't. So, oh, and yeah. I, th- I think you'd really like 30's Drive, personally. Hang around, um, I don't think I you'd like Pontefract, but I think you'd like... Mate, trust me, you that is one haunted building you want to be locked inside of. Um... Because it's scary outside. But yeah, um, no, so that is definitely on the cards. We're going to get that booked up very soon. We just need to decide a date between us. But I think I think Maya's birthday would be pretty cool. Um, let me just quickly see, actually. I just want to see um, what day that falls on. Oh, that's a Monday. Okay. Um, <sighs> yeah, we can figure something out. We can figure that's something fine. out. I mean, to be fair... No. Well, because we could stay down on the Sunday so we're not tired. Yeah, so Scott could actually partake this time. Yeah. Yes. Remember. I'd but like you might have to book things. a little Monday, Tuesday off. Yeah. But it's, it's fucking September. Come on. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so that's a little sneak peek. But yeah, um, patrons, um, thank you so much. And also Facebook members, thank you so much for being awesome. Um, there's still been plenty going on there, but I want there to be more. So we'll be doing that. And also the T-shirt club is coming just getting the designs together it was a bit slower than I anticipated because the guy that's doing the designs for me is an amazing artist, but he's very busy. So it will be worth the wait, I promise. And then once I get the designs in, I should have about six months worth of T-shirt club ready to go. So nice. yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And we will see you next week. Yes. Goodbye, everybody. When do you get Still, still don't have a outro, so no, we do don't. Hi, <laughs> go, ghost, ghosts away, ghost away. Fucking hell! Oh no, Cut we'll, it. we'll 